Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Recession Proof Creative and Messaging. My name is Ricky Bishlani. I am the Senior Director of Marketing here at AudienceX. I just want to thank you all for taking a bit of your time out of the day to join us. I'm going to give this just a couple of minutes to let people finish joining us. And while I do, I'll go over a couple of quick notes before we get started. First, we will indeed be sending a recording of this webinar to all registrants afterwards, so everyone can look out for that soon. Additionally, we'll be taking some time to answer any questions that you may have at the end of today's presentation. So if you do have any, you can go ahead and submit them at any time via the Zoom's Q&A feature right at the bottom of the interface. <clears throat> so today, AudienceX is joined in conversation with our partners at Taboola, as we'll share some insights on how to best adapt creative and messaging for our current economic climate. While we take a look at these practices can be implemented and leveraged throughout the omnichannel landscape using creative tech and high impact formats to help boost performance. Today's uh, agenda uh, will include uh, brief speaker introductions, and then we'll dive into our first uh, featured guest presentation, followed by our high impact creative presentation, and then we'll end it with the audience uh, Q&A. Here to guide us through a bit of that today, I am pleased to introduce our speakers from Tabula, Joseph Gualtieri, who is our creative strategist, and Philip Lundgren, who is our graphics designer at Audience X. Joe and Philip, thank you very much for being here today and joining in this discussion. I know it's going to be great. So before dying, diving into our conversation, if you can briefly introduce yourselves, including your role and background. Sounds good. Hi, everyone. My name is Joe Gualtieri, and I'm a global creative strategist here at Taboola, based in New York City and working on our creative shop team. If you're not familiar, Taboola powers recommendations of over 15,000 advertisers for the open web, maximizing the value of every moment to reach over 500 million daily active users. As for my background, I'm experienced in leading multi-channel media and creative strategies, brand marketing, content creation, and event production. Uh, with both agency and brand background, some of my campaign partnerships have included uh, the likes of Disney, NFL, Nickelodeon, MLB, Vogue, and uh, Columbia University, to name a few. And some of my work's been recognized by the Grammy Awards, Clio, BizBash, and uh, often televised on CNBC's hit show, The Prophet, while I worked alongside the show's main star and CEO. So I'm very excited to be here today to chat through how you can recession-proof your creative and support your customers. Over to Philip. Thank you, Joe, uh, for handing that over to me. Uh, my name is Philip Lundgren. Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna turn on my camera. Uh, there we go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> my name is Philip Lundgren. Uh, I'm a designer here at Audience X, um, partially, of course, doing these high impact ads uh, that I'll be talking about today. Um, other than that, we have a whole team of super talented people uh, working with helping our clients translate their mission and their messaging into engaging ads for any channel, uh, we're supporting them along the way in their other marketing efforts. Um, I've been working with design basically since I could use a computer, uh, but professionally now for the better part of a decade, doing freelance work and then agency work for both regional, international brands and everything from digital ads to UX design to video and uh, you know, really just helping improve experiences all through the customer journey. Uh, of course, then seeing a lot of different ways and methods to do that. Um, and we'll see some of those today. So I'll hand it back to Joe to start us off with that. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Philip. So to kick things off, Taboola's creative shop was asked to provide some ideas on how advertisers can recession-proof their creative assets to really help improve campaign performance while supporting their customers through a very difficult economic climate. So. With that, we're gonna to start today by looking at uh, marketing in a recession, just some general insights about the industry and what, what's happening in the world. Um, then we'll look at the consumer mindset and exactly how it changes during some of these difficult times. I'll give you some tips on exactly how to analyze your creative so that we can think about ways to take it to the next level. Um, we'll do an overview of some creative themes uh, to consider. Then I'll provide some brand strategies, mostly for awareness, and then we'll look at some more tactical creative asset strategies that are a bit, a bit more rooted in performance. 
Next slide. All right, so as McGraw-Hill found, companies that continued to advertise during a recession in the 1980s saw about 256% um, higher sales than their, their competitors post-recession. And those who didn't really advertise during this period saw about a 0% market share increase and a meager 18% rise in sales. Next slide. As for the present, um, eMarketer does note that the 2008 recession and the economic outlook of today are not quite the same. So past and the present are not necessarily going to be completely aligned. In that case, advertising spending is anticipated to continue to grow throughout 2022, despite uh, and into 2023 at this point, despite an ongoing industry rough patch as fears of a recession loom and stocks of ad reliant company companies are seeming to take a bit of a tumble. So. With that, um, here we have just a few ways in which, um, a few reasons why brands need to maintain or increase their marketing during a recession. And so the first one is that despite predictions, there's still a possibility that media costs can decline. Um, and so this really provides an opportunity for greater awareness for your business. The second is that uh, competitors may decrease their spend. And so this gives you an opportunity to increase uh, your share of voice and your market share within your category. Next is that uh, you can you do have the opportunity to dominate the image of corporate stability. And so this can help to eliminate an irreversible decline in market share in the long run. Um, tied to that, you've got long-term advantage. And so this is something that you can really focus on by maintaining your ad spend, combating risks of diminishing consumer behavior. Um, and you know that ties back into some of the countless points of data and case studies that we just talked about before this to really prove this to be true. And then last but not least is creative storytelling here. And so really remembering that uh, this period is a time for you to sort of keep what's working, but know that it's really important to evolve your messaging and evolve your creative based on current events, new trends, and some of the recommendations that we're going to discuss today. All right, so some of those trends might come as a result in a shift to consumer behavior. And so when it comes to the consumer mindset, we got to think a little bit about psychology here. And so advertisers are really going to need to get ready for a pretty extended period of evolving behavior, really by observing exactly how consumers pivot their life events, their financial obligations, and their brand loyalty to really reshape their perspective of value. So what we're looking at here is um, something that Harvard Business Review uh, put together. They formally categorized some recession psychology under four consumer groups and four categories of products and services. So on the left here, we're seeing the four consumer groups. I've summarized them a bit um, and started to brand them as, let's call it the stop clicking consumer. So this is somebody who pretty much halts purchasing and spending for the foreseeable future, a um, bit more cautious with things. Then you've got somebody who, in our case of digital advertising, might stop clicking and not purchasing, um, in which case this is a consumer who's probably a bit more distressed, but they're probably a bit more composed and patient, a bit more optimistic. They can wait things out. Then you've got somebody who probably continues clicking, maybe purchasing, probably a bit more financially stable, secure, a bit more confident. And then you've got somebody who probably stops clicking, uh, and or I'm sorry, somebody who continues clicking and purchasing altogether. So this is probably someone who's living a bit more in the present, throwing caution to the wind, happy to continue with their lifestyle despite the circumstances and the climate of the world. Now, as for product and service categories that you're seeing on the right, those categories can include things like survivables or items and products that are essential to life and maintaining general contentment. You've got justifiables, things that you might treat yourself to or indulge within reason. Um, next up is postponables. So these are things that you can probably live without for now, but you, you're probably still going to consider them for later. And then finally, there are expendables. And so these are items that during a recession um, are probably just altogether gratuitous and avoidable. All right. So. How can brands immediately determine if their existing creative strategies are right for in the moment? Um, so I, I would suggest analyzing your creative. I think that it's gonna be really critical in order to scale up. And so here are just a few ways in which you can do so. So first, uh, you've got um, analyzing trends from former recessions. Now, if you're a new brand, um, you might not have that data, but we're sharing it with you. There are plenty of reports out there. Either way, you want to look back at difficult economic periods to really identify audience insights, um, resonating creative and successful initiatives from that period. 
um, perhaps look even just back to the pandemic and see what happened during sort of the start of that. Second is to review your current campaign creatives. Has there been a change in performance already? If so, are your consumers resonating with certain creative assets that they might not have previously? Third is to take your top performing assets and really look at them. Are they relevant to what's going on in the world today? Can you reword them or reframe them to speak to the current economic climate or make them more relevant to present conditions? The fourth is think about questions being raised beyond, beyond your advertising. Look at your customer service, look at your social team, communicate with them, see what questions are being raised. Um, is there a trend in a certain topic? Um, in which case you can turn a lot of this into educational content opportunities or include this in some of your ad messaging to start to expedite your funnel and put your put answers to these questions front and center. And then finally, I think one of the things you need to analyze is the strength of your brand. Are consumers loyal enough to your brand at this point that they see the long lasting value of your product or service, or are you gonna lose out to the competition? All things to think about. All right. So when it comes to just some general creative themes that uh, seem to work well in previous recessions, um, a report by Planning Dirty analyzed countless big name uh, campaigns that ran during a previous recession, and they sort of narrowed down four key trends that contributed to each campaign's success. The first one was humble opulence. And so this was appreciating the little things in life, but marketing everyday items as elevated luxuries, pushing the importance of them even more. The second was escapism retreating from the truth by engaging with brands or products that indulge and entertain. And this doesn't even need to be a product, but this could just be an ad campaign altogether or a brand message or a brand story altogether. Just putting your brand front and center at this point to help your consumers escape through something that's, in, that's maybe entertaining and indulging. The next up is durability. Considering your product's service or lifetime value in relation to its immediate need. We're gonna talk a lot about that shortly. Um, and then we've got value, of course, focusing on just the general practical advantage of a product or service rather than thinking about the cost itself. So some of these themes are things that we're going to continue to see repurposed and enhanced as actionable recommendations for you to take advantage of. All right. So I would say um, here we're looking at some brand strategy tips for success. So I think if an advertiser's primary campaign goal is maybe elevating their brand strategy or increasing awareness, um, we'd recommend a few of these brand strategies. So I think the first would be to position your brand as an expert or a thought leader in this space by really strengthening your heritage, your promise, your commitment. Is your brand 100 years old? You know, call these things out. Um, if it's been around for a while, remind your customers that We've gotten through this together. Uh, it's It's been in the past. This is how we overcame, and this is how we're going to do it this time around. Next, I would say focused on human humanization and relatability by really building an emotional connection. I think we all know that it's really important to, to drive that human and emotional connection. Um, we feel it ourselves um, as consumers, as marketers, as advertisers, and we want to make sure that our customers and the people who are loyal to us and uh, are feeling that we're loyal to them as well. Um, and so I would say definitely look at ways in which you can bring about your motivational and uplifting narrative um, in a stronger way. Then I would say just really think about facing the challenge very directly. Amplify brand or company initiatives that are supportive to the current conditions. Um, think, show, showcase how you're dealing with things in a very solutions oriented way. And then finally, provide education and answers upfront to uh, support some of your consumers who are researching um, a bit more actively than they might normally. I think that, you know, even though things feel like they're slowing down in the world, um, there's still a huge opportunity for uh, research, education, and engagement through this period. So get creative and give your audience exactly what they're looking for. All right, next up. So here we're looking at some more creative strategy tips for success. So I would say if an advertiser's goal is a bit more conversion or performance focused, these are a few creative strategy tips for success based on an analysis of um, some of my own campaigns that I've done and various other campaigns uh, out in the world. So first off, you wanna think about how to, or you wanna communicate how to use the product or service to save on costs. 
how can how does this product uh, last longer? How can you make it last longer? Does the product itself have multi-purpose aspects, or you know, think about how it's benefiting consumers in the present moment? Next, I think you want to think about reinvesting in and reinterpreting your top performing assets or further customizing your creative assets for each channel. So if you know, you've know you got one message on search, you've got another on social, you've got another on native, you know, obviously they all need to work together. You're probably working off of a bit of an integrated approach, uh, but at the same time, Think about answering questions based on the channel that you're advertising on and what the consumer might be looking for on that exact channel. Next, I would say focus on personalization and localization. So this is really going to uh, really going to help build that personal relation with your customers. Um, help to tailor your ads to niche audience segments. Think about ways that you can really address their concerns. Call out your audiences. Call out. Uh, their, their locations, um, where they are, and how your product or service is helping that situation. And then finally, you want to think about promoting value. And I think that value obviously is different to pricing and discounts, but I would suggest, you know, running campaigns, maybe if you're, if you're running something, A-B test a little bit. Think about value in one, quality, um, long-term benefits of it, but then balance that with maybe another campaign or another set of assets that focus a bit more on like pricing, affordability, and discounts. Even though we think, you know, this is what's going on in the world, people are more cost conscious, do we, do we need to throw, you know, promotions and discounts out there? Not necessarily. Talking about value and long-term benefits might actually be what went out for you in your campaign. All right, next slide. Cool. Um, and so here we're focusing a little bit more on some of the actual ad types um, or tactics themselves. So let's look at video ads here and what you might do for that. So I would say if you're running a video ads campaign, assumably you're probably doing it for awareness. Um, I would say focus very, very heavily on your brand narrative through some of these recommendations. And you're going to hear some themes pretty consistent to what we talked about in that brand strategy before. Um, so first would be, again, to focus on your brand values, your commitment, and your heritage. Do this through your video ad strategy. Next would be to maintain and, and enhance that emotional connection by really addressing the consumer's challenge at hand. Put, you know, create a, a video that really showcases what's going on at the moment for them. Next, think about humanization. And so I would say, you know, if you're a business that is supporting your staff, is supporting your clients, is supporting your consumers um, through this difficult period, whether you're, you're giving back or, you know, your product um, actually can help somebody's life at this point, think about how you can communicate that through your video campaign. Next, coming together as a community um, supported by your brand's product or service. How, how does your brand or your product uh, bring people together during hard times. And then the final point here is um, to just maintain the storytelling aspect. Know that that's really what video um, is great for, uh, making sure that you've got a strong, consistent narrative throughout. Um, added value points here, um, a bit specific to a Tabula ad in this case, but applicable to any really, is just that if, uh, if you want to add a title or description or um, you want to have subtitles or anything like that, that really helps to sort of strengthen your video's key message. So definitely recommend that. All right, next up. Um, so here, I'm actually jumping the gun a little bit, pulling away from ads, thinking more about the content and landing pages that you might drive to. So I think here you want to focus on education and value, really address points that are not communicated in other forms of advertising. So I would say one, you know, position your brand as a trusted authority, highlight your mission, highlight your initiatives. Um, two, think about diversifying your landing pages, test different things, feature other forms of blog content that you already have. Uh, from there, you can think about um, number three, which is repurposing your content from other channels, um, videos, podcasts, et cetera. Um, and how can you interpret that or reinterpret that and re repurpose that into blog or article content that you can leverage um, on your landing page? Next, think about rewriting your top performing content to be a little bit more relevant to current events and what's going on in the world at the moment. 
And then finally, just remember to support your research and consumers by educating them very, very, um, very strategically with valuable information that directly relates to your product or service. And try to think about your FAQs. Try to um, think about what they might be questioning currently and try to provide those answers uh, within some of this content that you're distributing. All right, next up here, um, looking at more general ads, so maybe sponsored content in this case, um, thinking about some of your copy strategies in this situation. So I would say here you really want to focus on the benefits of your product or service, um, being very vocal about that within some of the copy. Um, and so these are just a few of the techniques I think you can use. Number one is personalization and localization. Um, make your audience feel like you're speaking directly through them through a variety of tactics. And so you might want to call out your audience um, or flatter your audience, or, you know, in some cases you're able to use dynamic keyword insertion where it can dynamically generate, you know, somebody's location so that it makes the ad feel a little bit more local and personal to them. There are many ways to do it. The second is bringing back the topic of value and cost. So really emphasize the value of your product and support this with maybe special pricing or promotions in light of difficult times, like we talked about earlier. As I mentioned, I think there's a definite opportunity to sort of A-B test the two against one another or create ads that sort of uh, balance a bit of both. Third would be education and information. So really engage and captivate your consumers by offering a lot of the valuable information that teaches them what you have to offer right within the ad uh, copy itself. Fourth is quantifying success. So think about leveraging numerical data that you might have, like five-star ratings, awards or accolades, and, and more data points uh, that, that might help to quantify your success um, and validate your business. And then lastly is just what I like to call sort of a super title formula. So blending a mix of standard advertising best practices, some of our own best practices, um, with some of the product solutions that you have to really transform vague copy into very value-packed copy that's more likely to grab somebody's attention and of course help them to convert. All right, um, next up we've got more uh, sponsored content standard ads for images and motion specifically. Um, and so here, I think the best thing to do is to really visualize people and solutions in this case. Um, so I would say people before product in, in some of these situations. Um, you can do sort of a close crop, um, typically people making eye contact. Um, we obviously connect with the eyes um, and perhaps have that visual of that person be supported by the solution that your product or service provides them with. Second would be familiar faces. So. Um, I always recommend showcasing trustworthy phases like experts in your industry, thought leadership figures, noteworthy ambassadors, et cetera, um, in an effort to really build trust and authority. So um, especially during a difficult time, if you put, you know, your, your CEO is well known and you want to put them front and center, um, sort of uh, expressing how they're feeling about things, um, I think that that's a really good way uh, to sort of help to drive that human connection and that emotional connection within people. Um, again, you know, other thought leadership figures or ambassadors, celebrities, et cetera. Next would be visualizing people in small groups, sort of uh, emulating that community aspect. Um, I think that that I've actually noticed in a lot of ads when I've looked at um, ad campaigns from previous uh, recessions and things like that, it really reassures uh, consumers to see, to see themselves amongst other people, reminding them they're not alone in times of hardship. Next would be solutions. So really displaying key benefits and solutions of your product in more innovative ways. So showcasing the details and engineering, um, if you've got propri proprietary features um, or things that, things that might help to benefit to what's going on in the world, um, things that really differentiate you from the competition or set you apart. And then finally, um, I always recommend motion, motion ads, motion capture, just general like slow paced, subtle motion to really help to capture attention in a feed. All right, next up. Um, here we're looking a little bit more closely at audiences. So I think it's important to remember that it may benefit you as an advertiser, or as a business to really differentiate your prospecting creative from your retargeting creative. Not to mention the idea of differentiating your, your creative for various audience segments that you might have based on their interests. But 
to summarize it specifically with prospecting and retargeting, I would say for prospecting, um, approach your prospective customers with valuable education um, on your brand and on your product from the start, rather than pushing a, a very aggressive sales focused agenda. I think you can balance your key benefits with some of this information on how your product can really improve their life in the long term, emphasizing the value of what you have to offer. On the contrary, thinking about a retargeting audience, these are probably either returning customers or near purchase customers. So ensure that your message is either is very closely related to uh, that of the pages they visited to ensure familiarity, but also address why your product or service is an immediate necessity at this point. Um, what's the present value that it's going to add to the lives of consumers? I think here's where you can probably emphasize more of that low pricing or some of those offers and be very direct about what they missed prior to converting. All right, so now's the part of the presentation where we pretty much pack five slides of very granular recommendations um, that we just talked about into sort of one wrap up slide here. So I think these key takeaways sort of break down which elements of brand and creative strategies um, you can apply to your campaigns. So in summary for video ads, I think you should focus on brand values, heritage, commitment, and storytelling. I think for copy, titles, descriptions, headlines, focus on the benefits of your brand's product or service, supported by personalization, value and cost, and then quantifying success. I think for images in motion, some more of the visual elements, focus on visualizing people and solutions, leverage familiar faces, uh, promote community elements, and uh, include a little bit of motion there to really capture attention. For content landing pages, provide education and information, address FAQs while supporting your research and consumers, taking the burden away. And then finally, for audiences, you know, think about those prospecting ads, focusing on value and education, long-term value, retargeting, a bit more direct, address immediate necessity uh, and present value. So from here, I will pass it back over to the Audience X team uh, to take you through some high impact creative. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Joe, for that presentation. Uh, I hope you all learned some pretty useful tips. I certainly did working on this presentation with him. Uh, so I'm here to go over one direction that you can take some of these strategies in, um, and that is high impact creative. Now, obviously, what is high impact creative? Because uh, it's not necessarily the most common ad type out there yet. So we're going to look at five high level definitions and functions of these high impact ads before we get into some details in a second. So high impact ads, they adapt to the content around them, uh, whether that be a website, an app or something else. So instead of just being static like normal display ads, they are a lot more dynamic. Um, they can responsively scale uh, to the browser or screen size to always look great no matter where they're placed. Um, they're ideal for desktop size, mobile size, or even a combination of both with just one unit. Um, and now to the really fun things. They can leverage rich media and video right in the ads. Uh, and they also often have some layer of interactivity to increase engagement. And that is a very defining feature uh, of these high impact ads. So now this engagement, that is obviously one of the main advantages of high impact creative. Uh, by boosting that awesome new messaging of yours that you've probably gotten from uh, Joe's tips uh, to help reach people in new ways and having an even bigger impact on the performance of your campaigns. Um, in fact, they've been shown to be 70% more likely to lead customers to learn more about what's being advertised. And customers themselves say that they are 40% more likable than a standard display ads. And I don't know what says value more than likable ads, right? So part of this high impact conversation uh, kind of has to be rich media, uh, which can be said to be part of high impacts. Um, I'm not gonna say a ton that isn't said in these paragraphs, you can read it all, um, but I'll summarize uh, that in a sense, rich media are ads that include some layer of animation uh, or video, um, and they have uh, different behaviors from normal ones, like expanding or floating uh, over the content. Uh, high impact takes this further and amplifies this rich media um, 
with interactivity and some other really cool things that we kind of show in a little bit, uh, giving you either more even more engagement. Um, so, so for some quick numbers, uh, just looking at rich media as a whole, um, on average gives you 267% better performance than standard display ads. Now, as you know, I'm a creative, I'm a visual person, but even I can get excited by numbers like that. So next, uh, we'll look at some of these features that makes this happen. So these are some of them uh, that you can get out of high impact creative, uh, helping with our goal of better ads and more engagement, better performance. So starting with interactivity, which again is really defining to these ads, uh, allowing you to get a lot of that education and information uh, that Joe talked about across in a more exciting way. Uh, store locators, they allow you to show the customers where your stores or your anything is located without having to leave the ad. Um, with form fill, you can gather user data, you can gather opinions. I mean, your, your imagination is the limit there on what you want to do. Um, and timers and countdowns, I think, kind of speak for themselves. Um, maybe so does 360 photo and video. Essentially, though, you get the chance to view uh, video and images in almost a 3D space. Uh, that can be really cool to showcase interiors or other sorts of spaces. Next up is carousels and galleries. Um, very common uh, component in these, giving you the opportunity to show different images or products from different angles, or you can even build entire pages with images, text, call to actions, all that stuff on each slide of the carousel. Stacks work in a similar way uh, with a different navigation system. So they're kind of like stacked photos on top of each other that the user can swipe in any direction to move on to the next one. Now, creative relevancy, uh, dynamic creative optimization is something that Joe touched on, which can be really good for that uh, personalization, localization. Uh, you can automatically sense uh, things about your customer, their location, their time of day, everything down to their weather to automatically swap different parts of your ad to make it more personal for them. Uh, shoppable ads, also really exciting, really interesting. Uh, and with high impact ads, you can bring shoppable experience directly to display ad placements. Or with Gamified, you can take it all the way uh, and make a little mini game in your ad, allowing users to experience app functionality or brand experiences right in the ad. So next, we're going to look at some of the formats that you can put these features into. Um, so we have this little QR code down here. Obviously, you see the preview of the ad. But if you scan that code, uh, you'll be taken to a little demo page uh, where you can see all these ads in action. Uh, these are ads that we've built in-house here at Audience X uh, to kind of help you view what these ads can do. Uh, so interstitials here, they're a full screen ad format that can be built with the features we just talked about to give a really rich experience. They're typically shown during natural transitions in a mobile app. So app launch after completing a game level or something like that. Um, they can be built to a fixed size, uh, or they can use that wonderful responsive resizing to fit whatever device they're on. Interscroller, uh, on the other hand, is an inline ad format uh, in which the content of the ad shows up uh, as the user scrolls uh, in an article or a feed. So it combines the power of the interstitial that we just looked at with this really nice scrolling feature. Uh, and the scroll you can even implement into your animations to use that as a trigger uh, for animations or other creative elements. So the user can also just continue scrolling to dismiss this ad, uh, making this a really low frustration user friendly format. Expandable ads, uh, they're a two unit format that consists of a more standard banner unit and a larger expanded unit. So these placements can either expand automatically uh, as they come into view, or they can uh, be triggered by a user interaction, so a tap or a slide or something like that. And it's good to mention, too, that these are placed in page by default, but can also be trafficked as sticky banners uh, scrolling with the user over the page content. Reveal ads. Uh, 
super flexible format that can also appear as a sticky or inline placement. The difference here from other formats is that it provides you with several different stages of uh, vertical resizing that it can transition between, uh, allowing resizing and interaction uh, within the page content, kind of interacting with the rest of the page. Uh, with a major advantage that this format allows animations and videos to play continuously across these states. So an animation that begins uh, in the collapse state can seamlessly continue into other states. Now we're going to talk about video a little bit, obviously it's super important uh, and somewhere where you can really push that value part and the storytelling of your brand uh, that Joe talked about. Um, not only can you get the storytelling part across from video here, though, you can also include an interactive layer on these kinds of ads where you can animate different assets and components to build up a really engaging experience for the customer, whether that be informational, shoppable, or just entertaining. Also in banner video, um, as we have a little preview of here, more video super important part now video has always been something that's kind of tricky to do in display ads but with inbanner video we have this really cool technology where you can stream high resolution video beautiful and normal standard size display ads and it minimizes load times file weights all that stuff and adapts the quality to the connection speed uh, so you get a really great user experience across channels and devices so I hope you get, guys got some thoughts and ideas from these. Uh, so with these covered, uh, I'll hand it back to go over some takeaways from today as a whole. Thanks, Philip. All right, so just to wrap things up here, I know that as a business, as a brand, um, you've got sort of a bottom line that you need to think about. But with that, I think it's really important to ensure that we are putting our customers first and making sure that our campaigns and our creative really help to uh, to capture their attention, to give them the information they need and to provide uh, long-term value and benefits. So with that, these are just a few of the, the key takeaways and the themes that we're recommending you uh, consider when you're putting together your campaigns, you're elevating or updating your campaigns um, creatively. So again, the first is um, that personalization and relatability uh, idea, we are all human. So we need to think about exactly how it makes you feel when you are late to an ad or when you feel represented in an ad. The second is brand promise and voice. Remember that your brand probably has a very strong personality, at least a good brand does. And so you got to reiterate your commitment to your loyal customers. Third is those promotions and values that are really going to help those loyal customers out financially in the long term. The fourth is that value and quality play. And so I think we know it's more important than ever to uh, represent yourself in the best light and really showcase the long-term value and quality of your product. Five is the education and information component where, again, you wanna alleviate the burden of your, of your customers. People are, are definitely feeling the impacts of what's going on in the world. Um, if, if they're going to shop with you, if they're going to work with you, if they're gonna commit and engage with your brand, make it easy for them to do so. And I think to wrap that up, just think about you know the balance of long-term need, long-term benefits, and immediate benefits of your product. All right, well, back to the Audience X team. Great, thank you, Joe. So we're uh, just into our Q&A section. Uh, so just a reminder, you know, if you do have any questions, feel free to go ahead and enter it. Um, we have a couple questions that came in from the audience. Uh, so uh, the first question here is uh, for you, Joe. What impact do you expect to see on Holiday Creative? Yep, for sure. So we've we've actually been doing uh, a significant amount of analysis and strategy work on uh, what we expect to see coming up for the holiday season. Um, I would say, you know, in terms of timelines, we're definitely seeing. Uh, People are looking to engage and start their holiday shopping uh, significantly earlier than usual. Um, even at the start of like October, I would say is sort of like the latest in which I would kick off a holiday campaign at this point. Um, if there's anything you can be doing mid-September right now, I would say go for it. 
Um, but I would say people are looking to spread out their purchasing a little bit more um, to alleviate their own financial burden. Um, you know, if some if people are living a little bit more paycheck to paycheck these days, their you know incomes might not be as disposable as they used to be. They're going to spread it out, so it's probably not going to be confined to the single let's call it Cyber Five period or anything like that. And so it's going to be really important to um, uh, to call that out and to, to to help alleviate some of that for your consumers. Great, thanks, Joe. Uh, next question. Uh, this is uh, for you, Philip. How do you approach high impact for a campaign with existing creative? Yeah, of course. Um, obviously, this is something that we do a lot. Uh, it kind of ties into what Joe was saying. Obviously, it is really good to kind of reimagine how you can use your top performing assets in other formats. Um, this is something that we and the audience X creative team is really happy to help out with. Obviously, we'll take any ideas or anything that you have as a client or agency, uh, but we'll kind of look at what kind of assets you have, uh, what we can do with those. Think about all the different formats, the components that we can use them in, and obviously look at what you want to accomplish with your ads, what your what your goals are, um, what you want your ads to say, uh, and we'll kind of work backwards from there uh, and create the the most stunning, uh, well-performing ads that we can in the platform. Great, thanks, Philip. Uh, next question. This is a question for you, Joe. Any tips for recession creative for B two B specifically? Hmm, definitely. I would say for B2B, think back to what we talked about earlier when it comes to some of some of those leadership figures. You know, I think um, I think positioning some of the people that you have internally within your business um, as thought leaders, um, putting them front and center, you know, creating content, creating campaigns around uh, their opinions um, on what's going on in the world or how their business can support other businesses. Um, I think that that would be a really strong way to do it. Um, it also, again, is building that human connection. B2B is often very driven on relationships. And so even if it is, you know, a larger scale, you know, more external facing campaign, um, that, that helps to Put it, putting those people front and center helps to feel like they're still developing a relationship just through the ads themselves. So that's what I would recommend doing just to start. Got it. Thank you, Joe. Uh, next question uh, is uh, for you, Philip. Can you go into more detail on the stacked ads? Of course, yes. Uh, so the stacked ads, uh, to explain a little bit further, imagine you really have a stack of papers kind of um, each page of your stacked ad uh, is its own artboard. Uh, so you can put your images, you can put colors, text, call to actions, logos, all this stuff. Uh, so it's it's good to kind of tell a story uh, as you progress. Uh, you can get say a lot of things in these stacked ads because each page you can put whatever you want, right? Um, you can do things like when you get to the bottom of the stack, they can start over and loop. Uh, it can auto animate uh, to show images uh, going through. Um, so it can be either interactive or automatic, but it can show a lot of content uh, on a very nice looking format. Great, thanks, Philip. And last uh, question, this is for uh, both of you. As um, do you have any additional resources available on the subjects that you both have discussed? Yeah, definitely. Um, from the Taboola perspective, um, we've got a one pager that summarizes a lot of this pretty nicely and more succinctly. Um, and then we've got a couple of blog articles and content articles and things like that that we're happy to share around. Okay, great. Yeah, and I can speak, I guess, for Philip's side. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, we do have. <laughs> So on our side, we'll, we we do have a, a new higher impact guide coming up. So we'll go ahead and share that uh, with everyone here after the webinar, and then we'll circle back with Joe and make sure uh, he'll uh, he'll reach out to the audience as well and send that over uh, as well for any supporting materials. Uh, and then obviously, if we'll, we'll send this deck out so you can look at the QR codes uh, that we looked at for our ads more specifically. Uh, you can also see a lot more examples on our website, uh, audiencex.com. We have an entire ad gallery dedicated to these high impact ads to kind of showcase what you can do there as well. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Philip. So yeah, we'll go ahead and include those uh, in a follow-up uh, email as well for the, the webinar recording. 
so with that, that ends our Q and A section, uh, session. So thank you, Joe and Philip, for participating, and thank you everyone for attending today's session. Uh, we will be sending a recording of the webinar to all registrants afterwards, so everyone can look out for that soon. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to connect with the speakers directly or, uh, or on social media. Uh, with that, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye, everyone.